Today I'm taking a look at the TT Artisan's 50mm f0.95 lens for APS-C cameras. Now when used on an APS-C camera, this works out at around 75mm, which is great for portraits, but this lens does have one little trick up its sleeve, and that's that you can use it on full frame cameras without many issues, and we'll be taking a look at some examples later. The model that I have is for the Sony E-mount, but you can get this for pretty much every other mount on the market. This lens retails for £189.99 here in the UK, which is actually fairly expensive for a fully manual lens, and is £30 more expensive than Sony's own 50mm 1.8, which I actually bought for this review, so I'll be doing some comparisons and we can take a look at those later. So I've been using this lens for about three or four weeks now, just out and about shooting and seeing what it can do, and I just want to preface this video by saying that I'm not going to be doing a lot of super analytical tests or photos of brick walls or anything like that. This video will just be my experience with this lens, sort of everyday use and what I think is good and not so good about it. So visually this lens looks great, with white, red and silver markings that displays focus distance, aperture and so on. It's fully metal and weighs around 400 grams, which isn't that heavy, but you can definitely tell when this is on your camera, especially if you're used to those really light Sony lenses. It has a maximum aperture of f0.95, with 10 diaphragm blades and a maximum aperture of f16. This lens has rounded aperture blades, which in theory should result in a more pleasing bokeh. Now the focus ring is smooth and has fantastic grip due to these engraved sections. It has a 58mm filter size, there's no weather sealing on this lens so I wouldn't take it out in rain or anything like that, but it does have a metal mount which is quite nice. Now as I mentioned this is for APS-C cameras but will work on full frame, although with a little bit of vignetting and we'll take a look at that more later. Now this is a fully manual lens, which means the aperture ring is manual as well, but this is not de-clicked, so not the best lens for videographers, but pretty nice for photographers. One thing that I dislike about this lens is this screw-on lens cap. Now the reason I don't like it is because you can never fully anticipate how much you need to screw before it comes off, which for me has led to me dropping it a bunch of times because I'll start unscrewing it not realising how far I've unscrewed it and then suddenly it will just drop off and fall on the floor. So let's talk first about this f0.0. 0.95 aperture, because let's be honest, that's probably why you're buying this lens. On full frame, f0.95 will produce some vignetting when taking photos until you stop down to about f4 or f5, which means for photography on full frame cameras this isn't ideal unless you don't mind that vignetting look. I took this lens with me on an engagement shoot to get some creative shots, and I love how these photos came out, even with the vignetting. I also find that when it comes to the bokeh, so the out of focus areas in the background, if you're taking an image of something close to the lens, this can look quite nice and dreamy in the background. But if you're taking a photo of something further away, it can look quite jagged and harsh. Now although this does look quite interesting and creative, this might not be the look you're going for. Now if you're shooting f0.95 in video mode on a full frame camera, you'll have no issues with vignetting at all because the crop of 16.9 will get rid of that entirely. Now focusing on this lens is very difficult at f0.95, it's basically impossible with this kind of manual lens, at least for me. You'll need super steady hands to use this lens in f0.95, to be honest you're probably better off putting it on a tripod, otherwise you risk the whole image becoming a blurry mess as soon as you move a little bit, because the focus plane is so narrow that as soon as you move just a tiny bit, whatever you had in focus goes out of focus really fast. Now I do have to say that I found the image quite disappointing at f0.95, often producing a glowy, ghostly-like image that really can't be used for anything other than creative effect. There's also a substantial loss of contrast with this lens when you shoot it wide open, meaning you'll want to stop this lens down to about f2.8 or f4 to get good consistent results. With that in mind, I must admit I'm a little bit confused as to why you would go for this manual lens over Sony's own 50mm 1.8 that's electronic and has autofocus. The Sony produces some very similar results at matched apertures, and here's some examples. Looking closely at these, you can tell that the Sony 50mm has a less of a purple brown tint to it, but let's take a look at the corners on this photo. So even at f8, the TT Artisan lens has terrible corner sharpness, which in all honesty is some of the worst I have ever seen, especially when you put the images side by side with the Sony 50mm 1.8, which is pretty much sharp across the entire image. Now although the corner sharpness is disappointing, I wouldn't recommend it for landscape photography or anything like that, looking at the center sharpness, 
it's actually quite good and possibly comparable to Sony's 50mm 1.8. Now although you get a creative look from the TT Artisan lens, I just don't know what it offers you over the 50mm 1.8 from Sony. If you want that blurrier background then you will get it, but also a loss of clarity, contrast, so you won't really find yourself using it at f0.5 that often anyway. Comparing these two lenses, the only thing I think I can give to TT Artisans as a win is the build quality. The full metal body definitely feels a lot more premium compared to Sony's 50mm 1.8, which is mostly plastic. But what I care more about as a photographer and videographer is image quality. I don't really care if the lens feels plastic and cheap. If the image quality is good, I'm going to want to get that lens over one that has great build quality, but produces a bad image. The TT Artisan lens does also have a few other notable issues, such as lens flare when shooting into direct sunlight. This is pretty bad wide open. There's also quite a lot of chromatic aberration at 0.95, which is this purple and green fringing on the image that you can see here. Again, the Sony 50mm 1.8 doesn't really have this issue. There's definitely some, but nowhere near as extreme as the TT Artisan lens. There's also quite a significant amount of focus breathing. So for video work, I don't know if this is going to be a good lens to use. So now we're at the part of the video where I've shown you a bunch of examples, I've shown you what's good and bad about this lens, and I would usually recommend or not recommend a product. This one is a bit tricky because if it's image quality alone you're looking for, I don't think this lens is worth buying. I think you should get Sony's 50mm 1.8 because the image quality is far superior on that lens. But if you're looking for something creative that has a little bit of a unique image compared to what you're used to seeing, then this lens could definitely be an interesting option. Just note that it is very difficult to focus at 0.95 and there are a lot of image issues as well when shooting that wide open on this lens. I don't think it's good enough to use in any kind of professional setting and I think the Sony 50mm 1.8 is a better buy in terms of image quality and what you get for the price. And that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like. It really helps out my channel. Subscribe hit that bell icon, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one.